Hey there, fashion friends. Welcome to today's episode. On today's episode, we are looking at how to build a wardrobe. Not an actual, like, wardrobe. I don't mean like an actual, like, wood wardrobe. I'm talking about like the clothes <laughs> that go inside the wardrobe. Yeah. Hey. With me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like So for today's episode, I think most people that are wanting to build a whole new wardrobe are people that are probably looking to reinvent their wardrobe or their style. So definitely check out my previous episode, the how to reinvent your wardrobe or style. That will give sort of a prepping steps to get you to this point of building a wardrobe. So on today's episode, I'm going to share my steps or my guide on how to build a wardrobe that's not only stylistic, but also functional, that circles back to each other so that you can have a wardrobe that you not only love, but that you can get so much use out of for a long, long time. Because everybody is different, everybody's got different scenarios, everybody's got different style aesthetics, everybody's kind of starting off from a different point. Some people might be starting starting off from zero others might be starting off with a few pieces um, but ultimately uh, you will have to translate these steps into your own sort of scenario but I will try to get as specific or give examples as best that I can along the way uh, to ba you know basically help you out as much as I can so with that let's get started we got a lot to cover so here we go Okay, so number one is anchor pieces. Yes, you guys have heard me mention anchor pieces a time or two for sure. So for our example today, I'm going to say that starting off your anchor pieces with two bottoms and three tops is a good jump off point. Now, obviously you do not need to go with the specific number. You could go with five bottoms, five tops, six tops and 10 bottoms, or maybe it's one bottom and one top, whatever it may be, whatever works for you, that is fine. But what I will say is that your anchor pieces should only be pieces that speak to the color palette that you want as well as the style aesthetic that you want. So these are going to be the pieces that you absolutely love that make you feel the best, best version of yourself. The reason why it's so important to have such love for these pieces is that these are going to be the items that you're going to circle the whole rest of the wardrobe around. These are the pieces that are going to keep being what you reference back to. With anchor pieces, it doesn't matter whether it's a bottom, a top, a layering piece, um, a pair of shoes, you can really use anything for your anchor piece as long as it communicates the color palette and the style aesthetic that you are going for. Um, as long as it's something that you feel comfortable revolving the rest of your wardrobe around. It can be any sort of category. It's just you have to be then mindful going through as you build to make sure that you're completing looks, that you're making outfits, um, that you're not doubling up too much on different categories. So one thing I will say is that unless you absolutely love and are obsessed and just can't get enough of bold prints and bold colors, I would not suggest making bold prints or bold colors your anchor pieces. Now, if you're somebody that loves bold prints and bold colors, that is your style aesthetic that speaks to you. You feel the absolute best when you're wearing these pieces, then that is definitely what you should go for. But the reason why I say don't use those pieces if it's not something that you're absolutely obsessed with is that one, it's going to be a lot harder to revolve a wardrobe around those things. So you need to make sure that you love them to basically be able to sustain that. For example, for me, the colors that I feel the best version of myself in is black, white, and gray. So that is my color palette. And then when it comes to prints, I'm not necessarily a fan of prints. I don't like, you know, crazy prints. Well, I do. There's, you know, in certain, at certain points, but we'll get, we'll get to that. But I do like stripes. 
I really love stripes. I feel really good in stripes. I think they're super flattering. So that is a part of my style aesthetic, a part of my sort of color story as well. And then as for style aesthetic, these are kind of going to be things that speak to that style aesthetic. So if we're using me as an example, my sort of style aesthetic, my sort of style story is on this side, I have my classic sophisticated sort of feminine side. And on this side, I have my sort of boyish charm edgy style. So those are kind of what I like to uh, marry together, sort of partner together to have that balance of contrast. That is my style story. That is my style aesthetic. And so within those anchor pieces, I have a kind of established that story, that aesthetic. Um, so once you have that color palette, once you have that style aesthetic sort of established within those anchor pieces, you have a good foundation started and it's ready to build. Okay, step number two is the branch off pieces. So these are the pieces that are going to complete a outfit. So if we have the two pants and the three tops, then we wanna add in maybe three more tops and one more pant within these branch off pieces. It's basically gonna be the second piece to a look. But one of the things you should be mindful of is that again, you want to always be making sure that you're completing outfits. So let's say you pick a bottom within your branch off pieces. You wanna make sure that bottom goes with all of the tops within your anchor piece, or obviously it doesn't need to go with the bottoms cause you're not gonna be wearing a bottom on bottom. So you get what I'm saying. It needs to go with all the other pieces within the anchor pieces that can complete an outfit. If it's a top, same sort of thing. You're gonna make sure that top goes with all the bottoms, all the layering pieces, all the shoes that are within your anchor pieces. Again, here, the number does not matter. It's all within your comfort zone. Uh, this is just sort of the next step that you're going to take after the anchor pieces. Number three is the layering pieces. This is going to be the third piece to a look. So for this, I would say you kind of want to make sure you get all of your categories covered. So I'd say go with one blazer, one cardigan, one jacket, one coat, and maybe one sweater. Um, again, this is like the minimum amount um, that you can kind of build off of. But I would say if you can get those five, that you'll be in a great situation. But either way, just get whatever is comfortable. Maybe you don't wear blazers. Maybe you don't wear jackets. Uh, maybe you just want a couple cardigans and some sweaters and a coat. Uh, again, it's translate this into whatever sort of works for you and your preferences. But no matter what you choose for your layering pieces, every single one of them should go with all of your anchor pieces. That's right, all of your anchor pieces. This will basically make it so you are having a very functional wardrobe. With that, at a minimum, they should definitely go with at least 80% of the branch off pieces. This will ensure that you are staying consistent within those stories to make your wardrobe the most functional it can be. Okay, number four is go to shoes. Three pairs of shoes is a great, great jump off point. All you really need is a pair of uh, dressy shoes, casual shoes, and maybe an edgier, sophisticated pair of shoes, like a pair of black boots. So for me, easy peasy, black boots, pair of cool sneakers and a pair of heels. These will cover all basis then. These will cover all sort of occasions and scenarios. Okay, at this point, you should have established a very good core wardrobe. You don't need to feel like you need to get all of this out at once, that you need to get your full, full wardrobe all at once. This is just us working on your core wardrobe that you can then continue to maintain and grow. At this point, you should have a pretty solid um, sort of go-to pieces, essential key pieces that are always gonna be your sort of default pieces. Um, no matter the amount, if you are somebody sort of like me and your core wardrobe is somewhat simple or minimal, um, very neutral, um, yeah, you're gonna have a little bit more of room to play to sort of add in a little bit of uh, spice, a little bit of um, flavor in there. So now let's add in the spice. Okay, number five is statement pieces. So for me personally, I always like to leave a little bit of breathing room for some statement pieces. And what I mean by statement pieces are pieces that are gonna add some elevated edge 
or style or contrast to your core wardrobe. If we're sticking to the example of today, maybe two to four statement pieces. Again, it can be any category you want, shoes, bottoms, tops, uh, layering pieces, whatever it is. Don't want to be so far out of that comfort zone that you don't ever want to wear these pieces, but just enough that when you're feeling a little spicy, that you can throw this in the mix to add a little bit of edge or elevation to the look. So an example of this for me is I love stripes. So one of the things that I'm super drawn to that is kind of my go-to statement is pieces that have the really bold vertical stripe print. Absolutely love this. This has been my go-to statement uh, print or statement uh, pieces for years. It's not something that I really wear on a regular basis. I'm not gonna wear this every single day, but it is something that I love to have in my sort of uh, bag of tricks when I want to be a little bit more elevated and when I wanna kind of spice things up a bit. Those pieces need to go with at least 80% of the rest of your wardrobe because then it just makes it so easy to style them. Okay, number six is adding accessories. So this is really, I don't know, this is up to your preference on how many accessories you wanna bring into your wardrobe, but accessories should technically go with everything. Why this is great is again, it just makes it so much more effortless to style accessories. Another thing that I like to keep in mind is that an accessory should accent a look and not distract from a look. So this is a, something that I always talk about with having that sort of balance is that um, accessories sometimes I feel like can really distract from an amazing look. I think sometimes people try to overcompensate with accessories when they don't really need to um, because if you have all these different accessories happening, to me, your eye can never land anywhere and nobody ever really knows what they're looking at. So you could have these amazing accessories, but because they're all on together, you're never letting one in particular shine and be your showpiece. Um, that is one thing that I love about having a very neutral, uh, minimal uh, sort of core wardrobe is that then when I do choose to wear an accessory, it really pops, it really becomes a showpiece. The other thing that I'd like to mention about accessories and trying to have accessories that can make your styling efforts effortless um, is a really holding your accessories to a very high standard. So I think sometimes people get a little bit like, they kind of loosen up their standards. There's like, ah, it's just an accessory, it's cheap, whatever. Um, and they don't hold it to the sort of, the standard of um, some, be, meaning just something that they absolutely love, um, something that goes back to their anchor piece that goes back to their style aesthetic. No matter what your style aesthetic is, no matter how many accessories you like to wear at a time, I just say really try to have intention and mindfulness um, and love when it comes to choosing accessories. Accessories are kind of that tool that will help you stay engaged with your core wardrobe. Okay, so now we are at a great point with our wardrobe. We've got our core wardrobe. We've added our spice. So now how do we grow and maintain that wardrobe? So step number seven is always be intentional. So when shopping, know what you're shopping for. Know what you need. Know what gaps are needing to be filled. Um, kind of have a mission in mind. Um, when you're doing your shopping, that you're not doing any impulse buying because impulse buying is going to be the enemy to that function that you've created within your wardrobe. Along with that, don't compromise. So stick to your standards. An example of this is I just genuinely, I hate acrylic. So I've said that many times, I hate acrylic for, and I shouldn't say hate. I mean, I could, I think I can. I think it's strong enough to where I could say hate but maybe I should just say I dislike acrylic uh, just for the fact that it makes me itch, it, it makes me super uncomfortable and it makes me overheat. So there's been so many times, especially this winter, cause I'm still fully on this mission to find a statement uh, duster cardigan with a super bold print, like a really chunky, cozy one. Um, and I'll come across one and I'm super obsessed. And then of course it's got acrylic in it. So sorry no go. I'm not going to compromise my standard because I know that if I purchase that 
cardigan as much as I'm absolutely in love with the style and the look of it. But if I bring that into my wardrobe and I put it on, I'm gonna instantly be itchy, uncomfortable, overheat, and I'm never gonna wanna wear it. So what is the dang point? Never, never compromise when it comes to your sort of established standards. Which segues me into uh, step number eight, which is establish your standards. So like I said, you know, acrylic's one of my things. I just don't bring any more acrylic into my wardrobe. I've got a lot of standards. We don't need to get on into all of them. But ultimately, maybe those standards, you know, aren't your standards. You might have completely different standards. Maybe you're somebody that isn't bothered by acrylic. Maybe you're fine while wearing acrylic. Maybe you prefer acrylic. Just you yourself kind of figure out once you have that core wardrobe, really dig down kind of into what it is that makes these pieces really comfortable to you, uh, whether it's fabric, construction, fit, whatever it may be, that is what you kind of need to establish those standards. And those standards will really help you, again, hold the new pieces that you're gonna bring into your wardrobes accountable. Um, and again, accountable to that function of your wardrobe. Okay, number nine is super repetitive, but always circle back to your anchor pieces. So whether you create your anchor pieces now, and then it's like five years down the road and you're bringing in a new piece into your wardrobe, make sure you are circling back to those anchor pieces because this way you are always reverting back to that same color palette, to that same style aesthetic, and ultimately maintaining the function of that wardrobe. And number 10 is only buy what you love. Only bring in pieces that, to quote Marie Kondo, that bring you joy. Um, that you're just obsessed with. Anything that you're sort of questioning, that you're not really sure of, that you're sort of feeling like you're making compromises for, don't do it. It's just, it's going to make it so it's gonna just add noise to your wardrobe. It's gonna take away from the function of your wardrobe. When you love every single piece that you bring into your wardrobe, it ultimately makes you love your whole entire wardrobe and you will then never have to say again i have nothing to wear because ultimately what how that happens is by bringing in so much noise into your wardrobe you're not even able to see what you actually love or what you actually love to wear there is nothing like you There we have it. Those are 10 steps, 10 guidelines to building a new wardrobe. Yes. And this is something that you definitely don't need to have it perfect overnight. It's something that you're going to work on and maintain and grow over many, many years. It's always gonna be sort of changing. It's not gonna be set in stone. There's gonna be ebbs and flows. Um, and and it'll be a really, really fun journey. So I hope that today's episode was helpful. I feel like this was a really big, big one for me. I'm really glad that I got this out for you guys because it is something um, that I've been thinking about for a while. All right, give me that thumbs up, comment below, share with your friends, and subscribe for future weekly episodes. If you are already subscribed, make sure that you have clicked that bell so that you are notified when I post my new episodes. Okay, you guys, you have a fabulous rest of your day. Stay healthy, stay safe, love, and support each other. Okay, we'll definitely be chatting soon. Bye.